Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea and today I am sharing some high-end farmhouse spring DIY decor. I have four DIYs to share with you today, so let's get started. For this DIY, we'll be making a wooden planter box with some painted stencils and fake succulents. I'm using this wooden box I got from Dollarama. It actually came with some drawers inside, but I took those out for this DIY. And I'll also be using some brown acrylic paint. These stencils I got at Dollar Tree, along with some succulents and Spanish moss. To start with, I'm mixing some of the brown paint with water, and I'm doing this to give the box more of a stained wood look. I'm going all around and painting all the sides with this paint and water mixture. After the first coat, I realized I had forgotten to sand it, so I quickly went over and sanded the whole thing. And luckily it didn't take off too much of the color, so that wasn't a problem. And now I'm adding another coat all around to each side. I'm also painting the inside of the box, even though you're not actually going to see any of this because I'm covering it all up with moss but I just thought it made it look more finished and it wasn't too hard to do. Now I'm placing these stencils I got at Dollar Tree onto the front of the box. I have a bird, a butterfly, and then some flowers with another little butterfly. I'm using a foam brush with some pink, yellow, and blue acrylic paint. Once the paint is all dry, I'm peeling off the stencils and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think they look really cute. Now I'm taking the Spanish moss and just stuffing it inside of each of the three compartments. Then I'm adding in one succulent to each of the sections. And here's the finished succulent planter box. Super easy and super affordable. Today's video is a collab with five of my friends here on YouTube. This is the spring is in the air hop and all six of us have made fun spring DIY videos for you. There is also a giveaway and all you have to do is watch and comment on every video in the hop and you'll be entered in to win a $60 Amazon gift card. Click the link in my description box to go to the next video in the hop and be sure to show everyone some love. For this DIY, we'll be making this spring bunting, perfect to add to your mantle or anywhere in your home. I'll be using this burlap I got at Michael's, and now I'm using a ruler and a pencil to draw out all the triangles for the bunting. I first drew a horizontal triangle on the burlap, as you might be able to see, but then I switched to drawing vertical ones so I could fit more on the burlap without wasting space. Each of my triangles are about three and a half inches wide by four and a half inches long. I'm making six triangles to fit the word spring. To make the bunting more sturdy, I'm mixing some Mod Podge with water and brushing it all over my burlap. I did this over top of two scrap pieces of paper so I didn't make too much of a mess. I let it dry overnight and now you might be able to tell it's more stiff and not so flimsy as burlap usually is. So this will make it a lot easier for making the bunting. Now it's time to cut out all the triangles. I'm making some stencil letters with my Cricut, but you could always freehand it with acrylic paint or you could use some stencils or letters from the dollar store. Anything is totally up to you. I measured on the triangles how big I wanted the letters to be. So now I'm just adjusting those sizes. I ungrouped the letters so I can manipulate them all separately. To create the stencil, I'm going to need a shape behind each of the letters. And I could have chosen a triangle, whatever, I just went with a square. I changed the color of the square to make it easier to see. I'm going to select the box with the letter and then hit slice. And now I can pull away each of the layers and I'm left with what you can see looks like an S stencil. I continued slicing all the letters and these are the stencils that we're left with. Click on make it, then select premium vinyl as the material. Now that all the stencils are cut out, I'm going to peel it off the mat and weed them out. 
Now, normally when you're weeding, you want to get rid of all the negative space and you'll be left with your letter or image. But for a stencil, we want to take out the letter. So we're just left with the box around it. I cut out a small piece of this Duck brand contact paper. And once I cut out each of the letters, I'm going to peel off the contact paper and stick it on. I'm using my Cricut scraper tool to press the contact paper down onto the vinyl. And now I'm peeling the white backing off so the vinyl is stuck to the clear part, then pressing that onto the burlap. I'm using my scraper tool again just to make sure the vinyl is really stuck down to the burlap. And it also helps when peeling off the clear part because you don't want to take up the black vinyl as well. Now I'm taking a foam brush and some acrylic paint and painting on the stencil. I'm going to keep repeating all the same steps for each of the letters pressing down the contact paper and transferring it to the burlap. The paint colors I chose for my stencils are purple, yellow, pink, and blue. I will say the purple doesn't show up as well on the burlap as the other colors, just because the purple is darker and not as bright. So if I was to do it again, I might stick with the yellow, pink, and blue. Once all the paint is dry, I'm peeling off the stencils and I'm left with the letters. To make holes in each of the triangles in order to hang them up, I'm using my Cricut weeder tool and just poking through and making two holes per triangle. Once I did this on one of the triangles, I used it as sort of a template to line up with the other triangles to try to get the holes in the same places on each of them. I'm using this cotton twine from Dollar Tree to string all of the triangles together. I did wrap a piece of tape around the end of the twine to make it easier to pull through the holes. I'm starting on the back side of the triangle and pulling through and then across. And this gives you a bit of the string across the top of the triangle. But if you didn't want that, you could start the opposite way from the front and go behind. Sometimes I did have to go back with the weeder tool and poke through the hole again just to make it a little bit bigger and easier to get the string through. And here's the finished spring bunting. I love the colors of this. I think it's so simple but so fun. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. I would love if you would subscribe for more easy, budget-friendly DIYs. You can also follow me over on Instagram, which is where I post DIY photos and quick video tutorials. I am at Andrea Peacock underscore over on Instagram and also on TikTok, and I would love for you to come say hello. For this DIY, we're making two of these dollar store topiaries. I'll be using two of these one and a half inch styrofoam balls, along with these two moss balls, some moss, a wooden dowel rod from Dollarama, and some white glue. The styrofoam balls will be the tops of both topiaries, so I'm using a pencil to make a hole in the bottom. Then I'm pushing the dowel rod through just to make the hole bigger, and this way I know where to glue the moss onto the ball. I'm squeezing some white glue onto the styrofoam ball, then spreading it around with a foam brush, and I'm taking clumps of this dollar store moss and sticking it onto the ball. There really is no rhyme or reason to any of this. I'm just taking pieces of the moss and sticking it all over the styrofoam ball, trying to cover up all the white spaces. You could also use a hot glue gun for this. I found the white craft glue worked really well, so that was fine with me. And that way you don't get all of the little glue gun strings hanging everywhere, which is nice. As you can see, I'm just gluing all the moss all around and avoiding the hole at the bottom. 
I'm now taking a piece of floral foam and cutting it down to fit inside this plant pot. These came in a set of three at Dollarama and I'll just be using two of them today and I'm painting them with this gray spray paint. Along with the styrofoam moss ball that I made, I'm also using these moss balls from the dollar store just to give the topiaries a bit of a different look, some variety. And again, I'm using a pencil to make holes in the moss ball. Then I'm going in with the rod and sticking it through the ball. I'm poking this dowel rod into the floral foam and then adding the moss ball we made earlier to the top. And now I'm using this Spanish moss to fill up the pot and cover up the floral foam. I have this burlap lace ribbon I got at the dollar store and I'm cutting off a piece and wrapping it around the planter. Now I'm just hot gluing it in place. Then I'll take a piece of jute twine and make a bow and glue it on the front of the burlap ribbon. I ended up making two identical topiaries, and this is the final result. If you can't find any of the finished moss balls, you could always make both of them with different sized styrofoam balls or different colored moss. Whatever you can find, that will work. For this DIY, we're making a wood dowel vase. I had this plastic container left over from some wood beads. And I'm also using these craft dowels from the dollar store. To start off with, I'm cutting down my plastic container so it's a bit smaller than the dowel rods. And then I'm hot gluing each of the rods onto the plastic tube. You wanna make sure the first few rods are really straight because those will determine what the rest of the dowels look like. And now I'm just continuing all around my tube until the whole thing is covered in the wood dowels. I used 59 of the dowels to cover the whole surface, but of course this will depend on what size of vase you're using. And if you don't have any leftover plastic tubes like this, you could always use a glass vase or you could use a leftover jar or can. Really anything you have laying around will work. Now I'm spray painting my vase with this blush pink chalk paint. I gave it a couple of coats to cover the whole thing. Now I'm adding in these pink and white flowers from the Dollar Tree to finish it off. And here is the finished wood dowel vase. Depending on what color you use for the spray paint, you could totally change the look of this if you wanted something dark and modern or more of a coastal feel or boho, anything would work. This is such a versatile piece. Make sure you watch and comment on all six videos in the hop to be entered into the giveaway to win a $60 gift card to Amazon. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you next time.